Hey guys, welcome back to Tech It. And today I'll be showing you how to make the horizontal sliding doors. And in the previous episodes, I showed you how to do this. So I showed you how to fr how to make frame motors and sort of how they work. And I showed you how to make this pulse lengthener. And we're gonna need this. So we're gonna combine these two and make this thing. And this thing is pretty awesome. So this is a very small one, which is just some sliding doors. You know, very simple. And I'll show you how to make that. Now, let's use a power source that we already have. So let's use this, shall we? Let's remove that. And do we need a battery box now? Nah, we don't. Of course, in a real world, in your real world, you would have to have a power, bo um, a battery box, but we don't. We do not. So first, you have to think about okay, what do I want to move? Where do I want to move it? And you know. So this is sort of an elevated example there, just to show how it works, and, and I'll do the same here. I think that would make more, more sense. So first of all, we're going to get our frame motors out, and let's make it a bit bigger gap, shall we? So there. So let's do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, there. Yes. So here. So then we need two more so let's put them here it doesn't really matter where you put these and here is that about equal also doesn't matter and then we can get rid of those and we need to get a screwdriver out yes oh we don't have any okay we'll make one via the magical means of the creative world now the door is going to be on top of this and it's going to slide outwards so this is going to be about the middle here and one door is going to slide this way and the other door is going to slide that way so on both sides we want one pointing away so that it, it'll pull all the support blocks that way and the other one we want to have pointing inwards and we're going to do the same here so this one has to be inwards and that one has to be going outwards there we go now we build the support frame and that's very simple it literally goes pretty much like that. Um, this might be a bit too big for this tutorial actually to show you how it goes fast but you know we have started it so we'll finish it. Now don't forget to actually what, what I'll do just to make it a bit a bit better for you. This will make it a bit easier is we're just going to start one over like it's already a little bit open the door and I'll just make it easier to put the covers on uh, so it'll be two holes so there's five there there's six there which is right because we've got this one get rid, get rid of the crafting bench two, two, two. Oh. now you can make this as big as you want uh, the only thing you have to keep in consideration is that the bigger you make it, the more power it sucks as well. Up to a point, and I'll show you this later in my design, uh, in my normal world. Uh, up to the point where if it's too big, the frame motor actually can't handle it anymore because it has an internal storage. So it's a bit problematic. Now, when we close these support frames together, so these doors, these will actually stick to each other. And to prevent that, we just put some covers in on both sides. You can do it on one side as well, but I'd always do both sides because it looks better anyways. So there you have it. Now the other thing you should not forget is, and we might not do it now, just because we're lazy, but usually you'd want to put covers here as well. Don't forget that. And actually we are going to have to do that now. Uh, but only on top of these. So I'm not going to explain why, just in, in general, always do it. Always put covers everywhere. Because some wires might stick to it and it is just, it's, it's a pain to sort of, I would say debug almost, to find out what's wrong with it. So that'll do for us, that'll do for us. <sighs> Good, so now we need to power it. Easy, very easy. Uh, just plonk down a cable, just again, we'll do it ugly. That, done. How easy is that? 
So those are both powered now. Now the next thing we want to do, oh, we need to power the back ones as well. So let's do it a bit differently then. Um, yeah, let's go like that. <sighs> problem. I have a problem. Cool. We'll do it. We'll do it a different way. I'm gonna have to put covers on all of them, and that's just gonna take too much time. So what we're gonna do? Is we're gonna use this example because I already put the covers in. So this thing is exactly the same. I just put covers under all of them, or at least most of them. Whoops. And I put covers in the side. So if I open it, I can show you that. There we go. So also in the sides I put covers. Here it's red and here it's black, but that doesn't really matter. You can put red in both. It doesn't matter at all. Now we need to hook it up. Now we can have a button for opening it button for closing it and I made a sort of emergency stop as well um, yeah, I'll show you how that works as well why not now you can use one button to open and close it but this gives you more flexibility so as we talked about before we have four frame rotors under these there there and on the other side too as well now these two are I believe the closing ones so these two will pull the support frames together and these two will pull them apart from each other, so opening them. So they're both powered just by the solar panels there, and I've got the wire running under here, as you can see. So it's pretty much the same setup as we have there, except for that's a big, bit bigger. Now comes the interesting part. Ah, and that's all this wiring. So let's forget about this wire for now. This wire is for the emergency stop, which is sort of a... It's sort of a bonus. It doesn't really do much, to be honest. <laughs> So now that's not going to get in the way. Nice. Very nice. So this is our, op uh, our close. Hmm. Yeah, we can do the close first. So just a simple red alloy wire going all the way around. You can make it much more compact if you want. And this design I showed you earlier here. And I'll show you here what it does quickly again if you haven't seen that tutorial. Uh, this is an RS latch and this is a timer. And you set the timer to the del to how long you want this thing to be activated. So, we set that, for example, to I don't know five seconds, six seconds. We'll see that this piston will stay up for six seconds. There we go. Easy as that. Now, what you have to keep in mind with these support frames is they move one block every 0.8 seconds very important so now we have to calculate well it's not much calculate a little bit of calculating how many times do we need to power these frame motors in order to close this door well the first time it's going to move one here and this one is going to move here and then the second time this block will be about on this level and that block will be on that level. So only two times and they'll be together and the door will be closed. So we want to have a system where we power these two frame motors exactly two times with a delay of 0.8 seconds between the two because we have to give it time to move all the way to the next block before we want to activate it again to move it one more. Oh no, if this is complicated, I, I, I think you'll, you'll, you'll see. So how do we do this? Well, we have two timers here and an RS latch. This timer is set directly to the closing frame rotors and I set it to 0.8 seconds. If you want to be safe, put it at 0.85 seconds, but this will work as well. So if we didn't have this, these two set up, this time would continuously try and close the door, which is not really ideal. So how do we set it that it does it exactly two times then? Well, I came up with sort of this design. And as you know, a timer is stopped when it's getting a red power signal, so like that. So I was thinking, if I want this thing to run exactly two times, I have to make sure that this red power current is off for exactly 2 times 0.8 seconds, so that's 1.6 seconds. Does that make sense? 
in 1.6 seconds or to be safe say 1.7 seconds this will go exactly twice so tick tick and it'll go tick tick close and I showed you this design earlier where how, how we can how we can say that by setting this to six seconds now this piston or this redstone current will be on for exactly six seconds so in the same way we can also turn this off for a set amount of seconds so I set this to two seconds just to be safe I could have gone for 1.7 but I think two seconds is safer so when I press this button, let me let me make it there again. Like that. You can see that this current is off for exactly two seconds. And that's exactly two seconds it takes to close this door. So let's open it again. And let's set this to Hey, why not? Five seconds. We're gonna make a very slow door. So because this is 5 seconds and we want it to run twice, so 2 times 5 is 10, so we set this to, I don't know, 11 seconds, just to be safe. So now, when I press close, the first one is going to go after 5 seconds. There we go, once. You can see that this power is so off, but once this goes full circle, this goes on again and it stops. And that's the second time. So this works exactly the same way if you have um, a bigger door. So you would have, for example, it'll be two blocks more wide. It'll have to move three times. So how do you do that? Well, you check this, 0.8 seconds normally. You want to have it move three times. So three times 0.8 is 2.4. So you set this to 2.4 or to be safe to 2.5. And that's how it works. And the closing, uh, the, sorry, the opening is exactly the same, exactly the same system. Um, I tried to do it with repeaters here, which works as well. And uh, the problem with repeaters is that once you get a big door, you need like ten repeaters. But with this system, um, and even this is not needed. This you can even make this here, so it's even more compact. You pretty much have a three blocks. And you can make a door as big as you want. It literally does not matter how big your door is. And let's just go to my other world and I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's go to Ticket Boxer. So here you have my massive creeper face door. And when I press the button to open it, there we go. It's gonna open. And this is the exact same system, exactly the same, there's nothing different in this. Except for that there's more support frames and I make it go more often. There we go, open. So this thing, each door is 12 blocks in width. I'm not going to count it for you, but it is 12. <laughs> Trust me on that. So because it's 12, we can go down here. So my engine room, and you should recognize this. Timer, iris latch, timer. Because it's 12 blocks, and I set this to 1.5, uh, the reason for that is because it's such a massive door, I need to give the frame mode a time to sort of recover some energy. So I want this to move 12 times. Now 12 times one and a half is what, 18? 18 seconds. What did I set this to? 17. Oh, that might not run run completely correctly. This m should have been higher. So I should have really set this to 18. But it's fine. It works. And this is the opening mechanism. Works exactly the same way. And these wires just go back to the frame motors, which is sort of... If I can get there, because this is a pain. They're behind here. It looks very complicated, but it's just because it's such a massive thing <laughs> but it works exactly the same way with this free now you see this is an extra addition I made now this is for the sort of the master switch and show you how that works so I press close it's gonna close very slowly but I say oh shit I, I have to stop it pull the lever there we go stopped how cool is that 
For now, we have some half open doors. <laughs> and this is very easy. Um, all I did was under this switch, which is here, I put a red little wire, wired it all the way around into this um, gate. And this will, this is a, I think it's a buffer actually. And when this input is on, all the other inputs are on as well. So it, it just goes to these timers again. So even when this is off, for example, when it's closing the gate, this will be off so the timer can run. But when the master reset switch is on, this redstone power will still be on and it will stop this timer from going. Um, so that's sort of how you can do that. And it works pretty well, as you can see here. And now we could open again. We can close it further if we want. Oh, no, because the switch is off. There we go. And then we can say, no, that's fine. We can close it now. And it'll stop there. So yeah, that's about a simple horizontal door. Um, it sounds very complicated, but when you, when you get started on it and you sort of fiddle around with it a bit, and I would recommend doing this in creative, um, it, it sort of makes sense and you can start doing some really awesome stuff with it. And I'll show you more of that in, in other tutorials later on. So thanks for watching and I'll catch up with you in the next episode.